power by Ecotec. Hi guys, this is Victor here with Worldwide Corals. We're here in the state of New York. It's a cold, rainy day. As you guys can see, I'm getting wet. Uh, we just arrived to our friend Andrew Sandler's house. Uh, he's got a couple gigantic display tanks. One of them is a 17,000 gallon tank. He's also got a 2,500 gallon tank and many other ones. We're gonna take you inside to give you a tour of all of his fish tank. It's beautiful, so come on in and follow me. guys, we're here with Andrew and his beautiful 17,000 gallon fish tank. You're gonna show us around a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to give you a tour. Come on back. All right, so how long has the tank been set up? Uh, first fish was uh, November 2019. November 2019? Yeah, first coral was probably uh, this year. How many fish do you have in here? <laughs> so Everyone are, has that question. We, we, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, it's and, insane. And, uh, and, uh, we don't know, we lost track in the quarantine. Yeah, we lost. I mean, I wanna say you have at least 100 plus tanks along. Yeah, I, I think, I think the number is, is somewhere between four or 500 in that zip code. Um, it's pretty impressive the size of the fish, how healthy they are, how fat they are. The crazy one, the, uh, the Red Sea, uh, the, the hybrid cell phone that you have? Yes. Incredible, yes. I mean, it's so fat. If, if, I don't know if you capture it, tell me on the boss. video. He's the big boss, you have a name for him? Uh, Mr. Picasso. Mr. Picasso. Yes. He's the most incredible hybrid fish I've ever seen. Yeah, it really is beautiful. It's just the size and how fat he is, everything. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. The amount of food that you give him, how often do you feed him? Uh, uh, these guys get fed, what, four times a day? Four times a day, yeah. Yeah, about, about four or five pounds a day. So each, each feeding is about a pound. Yeah. And what do you feed him? Frozen, mixed frozen. You try to change it up yeah, or anything specific? Yeah, no, we change it up. How about algae? How often do you give him algae? Because this uh, is a gang of tanks. Between one and two times a day of several uh, sheets of nori on clip. H how do you... You want to do that now? Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, one sheet is going to get snatched by the fish. Uh, you should see this. This is, this is a pretty cool... That much of the... Okay, that well, makes sense. No, so you go like this? Yeah, no, no. I show you. Put That's the way you put money in a wallet. Come on, show us. <laughs> <laughs> The tank is 17,000 gallons. It's actually somewhere between 15 and 17, depending on the speed we run the pumps. So each, each inch is like 1,000 gallons. So, so what's, the, what's the size of the actual panels? Uh, it's like 16 by 16 by nine. Nine feet tall? Yeah, well, it's seven. It almost looks it's taller. Seven. It's seven, but it's two feet underground. It just seems so much so taller when you So the panels are seven there. and, and uh, there's a two feet fiberglass drop. I'm, I'm so impressed with this whole thing, man. The whole aquascape. Pretty cool, right? All right, so what do we got here? Yeah, let's, let's show you this. This is, a, this is pretty impressive, ready? This is, I remember, is the heating room, correct? Yeah, so how do you heat the tank? Well, how do you heat the RO water up, right? In New York City. How do you heat your In RO water up if you need it? Uh, with Florida, With Florida, <laughs> Florida weather. 1.2 million BTUs, natural oh, gas. Wow. So I can heat up 10,000 gallons of RO, 60 degrees to 80 degrees in about 15 minutes. 
Wow, so that's to keep Connecting. the thing. Yeah. So this is literally just to keep the, the this is heat only. That's heat. And chilling, where is chilling? Chilling is run through heat exchangers and all the fans and condensers are outside. All the grays are train condensers. So these are just for the fish tank? Just for the fish tank. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, obviously there's redundancies built in. If one or two fail, we can always swap, swap all. And one's for the house, one for the fish tank? Uh, house and fish tank, and then the white units are dehumidification. Okay, interesting. Now the piping? That's the pool. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. Yeah. So Vic, this is where uh, I do my uh, worldwide coral uh, grow out in person. Your little farming? Yeah, my little farming. And uh, each one of these 150 gallon vats, we quarantine coral in here. So isolating them yeah, pretty six, much. six, seven weeks, fish. See how they react. See how they react. And... Um, uh, so you got six of these. I see you got four here, you got two yeah, more over you got there on six, the floor. Yeah, six systems that suck up all at different rates. Isn't that fun? It's a lot of water testing. It's a lot of water testing. Keeps you busy. Yes. We use these two reactors for GFO and carbon. Okay. Um, How often you change the carbon? Oh, well, like a once a month ball Once a month. Yeah, and uh, we even switch carbons. We actually like the ESV carbon better than the Rocks Point A carbon. No, ESV is a great brand. It's really less uh, lateral line stuff. They're local to you, right? Yeah, ESV? And, they're, and they're right here. They give to a Long Island economy. They've been around for a long time. Yep. Great product. Uh, Huge sulfur reactor and two huge skimmers with ozone. How many gallons are these protein skimmers they hold? <sighs> They're running uh, 140 gallons per minute of flow through. Wow, each, big pumps. Each, yeah. And you happy with the performance of them? Very. All right. Very. You notice a big change from the one before? Yes. The one we had before, I feel like, was half of this. It was like one of them. Interesting. Uh, and uh, big massive calcium reactor. Really haven't even turned it on yet, Vic. It's, yeah, there's uh, no demand for the cores yet, but it, there's some. But so we're, we're gonna lower it by 0.1 every every few weeks. Who built that? Uh, the head guy from Bermuda Aquatics. Okay. So the one that uses SeaWorld that I like a lot of this Sharan. Correct. It's a German they company. Like it's a good company. This is the giant fluidized sand filter. Uh, this is the reason why we have to do a water change like once a week in the tank just to reduce the pressure. And it gets dirty. So we backwash it. We backwash a thousand gallons a week. And without that... It goes right out to the cesspool. But without that, your nitrous will be through the roof, right? I, I think the tanks... I'd say about 30 to 40 percent of the water flows through here. It's a, it's a, uh, a great mechanical filter and, and also Biological, I guess. This are, you, food ice. are you struggling with uh, nitrous and phosphates in the tank? Not really. Because of the amount of fish? Phosphates, we drip lithium if we need to. Uh, the GFO holds it pretty constant for a good month. Okay. And uh, nitrates, the sulfur reactor, and the two we have back there, I'll keep it around 10, 15. Uh, oh, Vic, let me, let me show you guys where we make our water. Don't fall How in we there. Do it. No, no, yeah, this is dangerous stuff. Yeltsin, get it. What's that? This is 5,000 gallons of salt water. I got a So what do we have here, Andrew? You know, I'm a uh, heavy, big RODI machines. We make about uh, 10,000 gallons a day. How's the, the water coming out of here? Pretty bad? I think it's, I think it's like... Uh, 30 coming in and, and zero coming out. It's not bad at all, no, water. No, no, no. 30 coming in? 30 coming in, mid-30s, yeah. So not like Florida, right? Oh, my uh, lord. Where, where are you guys coming in? Anywhere oh, from two, anywhere from two to up. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's disgusting water, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's why your pizza is so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's is that the UV right there? Yeah, this is the massive UV. Check this UV out right here. So who, who I, built it? Uh, William Lynn. And this is the bulb that's missing, you can tell. You guys wanna be in the video, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Andrew, what do you got so here? We, uh, we knew that we couldn't keep clams in the big tank. Because of the angels, fish, right? The angels, yeah. So we decided to connect the clam tank to the system where I can look down into it. And I see you're still using metal highlights. That's cool to see. Old metal school. Metal highlight, radium 20K, and we're waiting for the reef bright lights, the blues. Okay. Cool. Uh, and in the next few weeks, this tank's, this tank's going to be loaded with clamps. So, Andrew, how many systems do you think you have, roughly? Over and then I got this one, which is also connected to the main system. I don't, I we think, I think I once counted 14. Man, so, those two fish are freaking insane. Yeah, like your koi tanks at, uh, insane. at Worldwide with two personatus angels. Your fish collection is, is unmatchable, Thank man. You. Seriously. You gotta, have, you gotta have the most rare fish collection I've ever seen in one place. Yeah, it's... Uh, I've never seen anything come close to it, man, tell you the truth. I'm very, very impressed. Thank Look how you. beautiful these two chalices. That's the original pink boogies. This, yeah. we wouldn't dare put it in the, in the big tank. I was no, afraid they'd eat, right? they'd eat it, yeah. Yeah. Why do you think they're eating? You think it's know, the angels or you think it's the tanks? It's, the, it's both, and, and for whatever reason, some of the chalice makes it, some don't, don't. And, and it's very hard to know why. I want to say it's got to be the angels, because the amount that you're feeding, yeah, those the, tanks shouldn't be... Yeah, and it's not the tanks, it's the angels or butterflies. So you were showing me earlier those, those tanks out there, those raceways. That's how you quarantine your course, you isolate them for a little while, make sure they yeah. don't have anything crazy. Correct. How about fish? How do you go about that? Uh, these are five different systems here where uh, we run different meds through. And the fish starts off in one, and it can be starting off with chloroquine or copper, then we move it to Duprazi and usually another couple of weeks to, to observe after that. So you're like a fish pro by now. Yeah, we're well, like a pharmacist. No, seriously. I got man. a lot of antibiotics. I got all sorts of things. Interesting, man. I'm going to take you down to the engine room here with three different systems and the water storage exists. And that's the, the basement that you dug out? Yeah, we dug it out and built it. All right, let's go see it. So it's a sub-basement. It's sub-basement. It's got uh, three sumps and, and several water vats. where they mine the Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, so what is this? So believe it or not, the, the, the right side of this, these are all VFDs that run the pumps that convert the phase uh, one power to phase three power, and we control the speeds of the pumps. Okay. These are all circuit breakers and redundancies. And who knows how to use this? Oh, there's an there's a there's a industrial guy that comes here. What if it's not around? He's around at home, always on remote. I got Jonathan, Yeltsin, myself, and the computer guy all, all watching the screen remotely. The four of us. And I've had to hit circuits, breakers in here. So, like, what is all this? Circuit I'm breakers for stuff. For different things, too many things. things. Yeah, and the monitoring, monitoring of, the, of uh, flow control, etc. So this is the basement of the house right now. <laughs> you the when house, you bought it, this was the basement, that was it. House ended here. You what? House ended right here. And you expanded all of this. Oh, yeah. oh so you yeah. built this spanking new. This is all new space. And yeah. above, the back of, the, the behind the office tank is all new space. I see it now. Gotcha. And then we built this space and then we went down. But this was the ground level for the basement. This was a garage and you were outside. This was outside, right? So this is the out, no, this is the outside. This is the room. And it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's outside, it's still outside. Yeah, right, right, yeah, right, right, right there. So one day you told the wife, I'm going to turn 20% of the house into a fish tank? Basically. <laughs> but I bet you, you didn't tell her how big or how deep you were going. Uh, yeah, Andrew, I keep seeing that um, you have uh, tanks everywhere. Everywhere I walk, there's more tanks. 
What is this one here? Victor, this is uh, another cube. You know, I love my cubes. I have a pair of Abai angels in here. And some rare deep water amphias and some wrasses and fishes that, that you know, come from four or five hundred feet down. So we keep them in a separate system, a little cooler. And it's connected to another cube up in my office. What, what, 74, 73, something like that? Yeah, 74, 75, yeah. The Antheus, I went to uh, Bulk Resupply, I was hanging out with Ryan two weeks ago, and yeah. he got two of those in his tank, but it wasn't as big as that one. Yeah, they start the, out like yellow and pink. I mean, these were pretty big, but I can't believe the size of that one. That it's one's like huge. Pre prehistoric. A lot of nice rare corals here, man. Yeah, there's some beautiful corals. You got corals some nice there. rainbow chalices, some Aiken yeah. Hilea, some Bower Bankies. You got the beautiful uh, meat coral right there. Yeah, I have more control in this tank of fish picking, and so I keep the I noticed that. Over here. That's what you're doing a lot of the hammers, yeah. And, yeah. and you fill in all that in here. The LPS, the angels send, uh, tend to pick over, over there a lot? Yeah, and, and, and uh, anything fleshy, right? So, in Acro is no problem, but... Even with the angels, they don't pick at them, huh? There's enough of them, enough Acros. Yes, there's enough, and they've, they and they've been them. trained to look up. Yeah, and you're feeding them so right, much that they right, don't go after right, it, you know? Right. All right, so this is your office, Andrew? Yeah, Vic, this is my office, and uh, this is the other cube that is connected to the downstairs cube. What we just ate, right? Yep, correct. Gorgeous, man. So and this is the cold water one? Yeah, it's a little colder. What do we keep? 75. We used to keep it 74. You got four freaking this angels? Personatus oh. angels and Four narcosis. of them? Yeah, four. And the, and, and the funny thing is, within a year, one more year, I'll have to move them out. They'll get too big for this tank. And where are you going to put them? Oh, uh, you know I have question. a big display? <laughs> Maybe here. Maybe here. So the 2500 behind those, it was empty last time. Yeah, yeah. So we made this go up and down. So we can get to it from both sides. That is amazing. You want to show it to us from the top? Yeah. 12 feet by 6 feet by 4 feet. 4 feet deep, yep. Yeah, mine is the 1500 that we got is 10 feet long, right. five feet deep, right. and four feet tall. Right. So How tall is this one? This is four also. Four? So it's the extra two feet and the extra feet that gives it that right. much more. Yeah, it makes sense. Right. That's the extra thousand gallons. Gorgeous, man. I need bigger tanks, guys. But anyway, Andrew, one of the things that I notice a lot, your passion for a rare fish. Yeah. Where was the where that came from? It's like uh, it's like it's like Indiana Jones, right? Yeah. It's just, it's collecting. You're collecting, Collect, collecting a lot passion. of fish. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of fish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're pretty good at this uh, fish medicine thing we were talking I, about I earlier. I should have huh? been a pharmacist. Yeah. <laughs> you should have, huh? Should have, yeah. Maybe you need to open a fish wholesaler or yeah, something. Yeah. So I mean, the amount of medication I have back there, and I, and, I, and the nice thing is I understand. The, the, the sensitivity and the way the medication is actually the path of mechanisms. So I can look at a fish and say, I, I, I could say I could see that antibiotic better with sulfur than Cipro and vice versa. I'm actually getting that, that kind They're of good, good with at the it. fish. Because yeah. look at the amount of fish that you have yeah, quarantined. Yeah. Every single fish in there has gone through a quarantine yeah. process, right? Correct. I mean, and, 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 and many, many conversations, hours and hours with fish vets on the phone. I'm sure. So, They've been teaching me the process on, on how, how the mechanism, the antibiotic works. And stuff. Have you ever done any surgery on any fish? I've never done it, but I've had it done here yeah. by other people. Well, what have you guys done? Eyes, repair eyes, eyes bladders? Uh, bladders and uh, shots, injections. Incredible. Batrial injections. See, that's pretty advanced, guys. I mean, we have something to learn from Andrew here. Batrial injections is better. The, the injections are better than the, than the batrial powder. Interesting. Gets in them much better. So earlier I was asking you how much fish you think is in there, and you told me there's no way of telling. It's too much. Um, what are By some species, right? Like if you, if, you, if, you, if you called out the species to me, I probably could get you a count or close enough to a count. Yeah, you're right, because you I can start counting how many powder blues. you got to yeah, start I, roughly. I, I think I know, because I know what I started with. I, yeah, exactly. It's well over 100 tanks in there. I'll tell oh, you that yeah, much. Sure. Um, so, a couple questions, Andrew. What are some of the biggest challenges that you have come across? I mean, I'm sure it's many in a tank this size, you know? Um, so, micro bubbles in the sump. 
Uh, so, so the volume of water the that is being transferred. The volume of water that moves and you think you built baffles, but they're not quite good enough for the micro bubbles. Gotcha. So we build mm -hmm. dams. You saw how we how we in we build dams in there with that with that plastic stuff, and sometimes we'll even take extra live rock and we punch holes in in buckets and send the live rock down into the uh, sump on a string on a on a bucket just to block just to dam it. Gotcha. Um, flow has been a little bit of a challenge only because all the flow doesn't work some way around, around the system, around the island, but not really blown directly on the island. So, so we're figuring out ways we can sort of, right now Michelle would go in there and, and actually take a, a jet from a thing and literally blow and rocks, off, the rocks, blow rocks off. I'd like to find a way of sending it down with a uh, robotic arm, you know, from the front to one of the corners and, and sweep it for like an hour at a time and then send it back up. But the tank looks fairly clean to me. That's just my yeah. personal opinion. Yeah. When I look at the rocks, they don't look dusty. They don't look yeah, like yeah. it's too much algae yeah. growing and stuff yeah. like that. Um, you were talking about the flow it can be a challenge. Every time we build a peninsula, obviously it doesn't matter if it's a 400 gallon, 200, 600 yep. gallon peninsula. This is not a cyclic peninsula, it's more of a cube, but it's most yep. of the flow is coming from the back. Right. It can become challenging, especially yep. in a tank that is um, nine yep. feet deep. Yep. But I see you got uh, closed loops in the, in the bottom. Yep. There's a and they seem to be loop. working pretty yep. well. I yep. mean, and, and half are suctions and half are outtakes, and we can switch them. What do you mean? So that closed loop is, is all those pipes. Yes. There, some are intakes and some are outtakes. Oh. And we can switch them. We have, we have a mechanism to change the intakes and outtakes to make them out in, et cetera. Somebody gets stuck, like a fish gets stuck in there, I can shut that off and, and actually blow it back out. Interesting. And we uh, just had four or five snails clog up, uh, you know, that, that intake. You, you got to have something to, to, to do that with. Have you had any major floods with a tank this size? No, nothing major, thank God. Good, thank God. Nothing major. Uh, was, was it an issue to find the right lighting for a tank this size, being so deep and something new, you never done this before? And, and, and the way we did that was uh, only ask somebody that tried, tried these on a tank similar. And he liked them and grew coral with them, so we went with them. I think they're great lights. If anything, they're super strong. So Andrew, tell me a little bit about the mains that goes into this system. Not just the tank, the system itself. I mean, there's a, there's a uh, first of all, there's a dedicated guy on this thing 24 hours a day. Okay. He's changing uh, carbons, GFOs, which we change the pool filter, which is those cartridges, th every three days. Um, you were saying uh, to yeah, change the, the carbon, it takes a half a day? The GFO takes a half the a GFO, day. The GFO, that's what it was, the GFO. GFO takes a half a day, two men a half a day. Why, it's just too heavy, it's too many pounds? You gotta it's open just... it up with the screws, it gets hard, you gotta vacuum the stuff out, you gotta clean, then it's 12 buckets of GFO. 12 yeah. buckets? Yeah, you know how long that takes to rinse? <laughs> so water it's changes? It's like 500 gallons of rinse to do. You have a systems to do water change, or you just dump a pump with a hose, how does it go? Uh, big system, the computer does it, um, but we automatically, we, we, automatically. But you know, the hose has to go into the into the sump. It measures it. But you know, Yeltsin's dumping those things manually into the into the and also into the, the, the water mix you were doing. Into the earlier. water mixing, yeah, into the vat. So, Andrew, what inspired you to go s with such a large tank? What was? Did you always knew you wanted something so big one day, or? Did you I, see something out I, yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, I, I always want. I always loved Joe's tank at uh, at the aquarium. Long Island Aquarium. And I always dreamed of that. Uh, when the marriage went bad, I moved out of the house, and and I basically took it, uh, the opportunity to do something big again and do it over again. The effort and time, and then that he went into this is. I don't think many people will ever understand that you have to live or no, be involved. No, it, in it, it was five or six years of of between between. <clears throat> The planning stage? So today? No, we're probably seven years into today because the tank's two years already in. Exactly. Right? And, and seven years, like, like you can't just, no matter what money you have, you can't just, it, presto, it's here, right? I That's a lot that of work and, and, a lot, and a lot of downtime, writing checks, 
You write checks and you see nothing for four or five years. Write yes. checks, write checks, write checks. It like, kind of screws your mind. I'm sure. That's why, like I said, when I left here last time, I left overwhelmed. I left overwhelmed because I see the size of the project and the potential of it. And I can tell that is at the time it was pretty overwhelming, you know? And yeah. like I said, I see it today. You have come a long way, buddy. So, Andrew, thank you for everything, man. Again, I'm very impressed. It's very impressive what you've done here with this tank. I'm looking forward to showing you when you come down to our store in two weeks and uh, continue the good work, man. Yeah, pleasure uh, having you again, and it will be a pleasure visiting you again. Yeah, and hopefully I get to see it uh, next year again. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. All right.